So we're starting this week with a permanent record by Ben Seidman and Vanishing Inc. And this has recently come out and it's a really, really, really good trick. Like I didn't know what to expect. I didn't really know much about it. I got it into review because a lot of people were saying that this is something um, that they wanted to see a review on. So we got it in. And I'll tell you right now, I think this is great. Yeah, it is. I think this is really good. Um, I've never really seen much of Ben's material before. Uh, but what I picked up from the tutorial is that he is a very, very, very good teacher of magic. I mean, the tutorial really breaks things down to the nth degree. Now, I'm not going to say anything about the product just yet. What I'd like to do is just do a performance first of all. Yeah. So I'm going to do this on Ryland, show you exactly what this trick's all about. And then when I've done the performance, we'll come back into the uh, studio and talk about the pros and cons. Yeah. So, right, I have a pack of cards here. And I'm going to try and influence you. you any, do you believe in influence? Do you believe I'm able to influence you? Yeah, I think so. Well, how many cards in a pack of cards? 52. Very good. Now, well, all 52 there's all certain 52. cards that are more desirable than other cards. If I asked you to guess what the most commonly named card is for a male, what would you say? I do like court cards. No, no, it could be any card. What would you say is the most commonly named card? Ace of Spades. You, you'd say the Ace of Spades. Yeah. And that's a free choice, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you could you could literally choose anything, but you chose the Ace of Spades. Yeah. Do you believe that I influenced you? Mm. I did influence you. I influenced you to say the Ace of Spades. Because while I was talking, I was holding this card box. And on the card box is actually a picture of an Ace of Spades. And I was able to, you can probably see that there, I was able to influence you to name the Ace of Spades because there was an Ace of Spades on the card box and I was like flashing it and I was like, hey, you know, like, so so we're going to try and do this again, all right, mate? We're going to try and do it again. But this time, don't let me, oh God, I've got loads of cards left in there. There we go. This time, don't let me uh, sort of influence you in any way, shape or form, okay? Don't let me influence you in any way, shape or form. It's just shouldn't work. In fact, to make it so that there's no way I can influence you, I'm going to have you pick a card. Now, you can see that they're all there and they're all different. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm going to spread through the cards and I want you to touch anyone you want to. Now, I don't want you to think this is some sort of weird force. Are you happy with that one? Would you like to change your mind? I'm happy with that one. Can you look at the card quickly? I'll show it to the camera. That's the card. I'm going to leave it down in the center of the deck. Give the cards a couple of cuts just to make sure that it's lost. Is that fair? Yeah. So now you're you're literally thinking any one of these cards. You had a completely free choice of any yeah. one of them. I didn't influence you in any way. There's no way I could have influenced you, right? Watch. It's done. What's done? Well, what was the card that you took this time? The Ten of Hearts. And that was a free choice, right? Yeah. Do you remember the Ace of Spades that was printed on the box? Yeah. Watch if I rub that ace of spades. It changes right there into the ten of hearts. And my friend, you can examine it. Okay, so that's the trick. That is permanent record. And I think the first thing that I need to say is there is a lot of ways of doing this. Yeah. So what you get with this is you get the you get a gaff deck. And you get a bunch of gaffed cards. And the gaffed cards will allow you to change a card box. Now, once that card box has been changed, at that point, at the end, the box can be completely examined. The gaffed deck cannot be examined, but the card box can be examined. Uh, and the main routine, the one that Ben explains first of all, is about as close to self-working as you're going to get. It starts, as you saw, with a psych force. I used a slightly different sort of psychological force on Ryland because I knew he wouldn't he wouldn't go for the way that Ben suggested doing it. Um, but he goes through what to do if it doesn't work. He goes through what to do if you've got a group of people. Like, he really breaks everything down. But then you go into the second phase of the routine where they pick any card and the gaff deck really allows you to have a totally yeah. free choice, doesn't yeah. it? I mean, it really allows you to have a totally free choice. And then the card box changes so that, you know, the, the, the card on the card box changes to the card that they name, 
which is really strong. You know, it's kind of a little bit got that sponge balls moment. You know what I mean, right? People like sponge balls because when they open their hand, they're expecting one thing and something else happens. This has that similar sort of thing. The holding onto the card box. I don't think you even need to make a big deal of it. You can just give them the card box. They're not going to go check it out. Yeah, can you just hold that for a second? Yeah, just hold that for a second. Then later on when they look at it, it's like, hang on a minute. That's just changed. How did that happen? And at the point where they've noticed it's changed, everything with that card box is examinable, which is really cool. But then Ben goes through a whole bunch of other ideas, a load of subtleties, a load of handling tips, and you can tell that he has worked this in and then some. So he talks about how you don't, first of all, he talks about how you can actually have some really nice subtleties when using the gaff deck and how to uh, use the gaff deck in a variety of different ways to actually improve on the, uh, uh, on, on the fairness of it, so to speak. But then he talks about how you can actually do this with a regular deck. I'm gonna be honest with you, I will probably use this as a regular deck. Uh, because if you don't use the gaff deck, you can still do it with a regular yeah. deck. You just have to do a different force. Mm -hmm. But it means that you've now got a regular deck that you can go into any other routine. You just need to have one gaffed card in that deck and you can go into this yeah, anytime, just, anywhere. It's just not as clean. It's just not slightly as clean. Yeah. But the ending is cleaner because you left yeah. it with a regular deck. So, um, and, and the real gold on this project isn't even the trick. The real gold on this project is when Ben starts talking about a system that he's developed uh, called CUPS. Now, I'm not going to tell you what CUPS stands for because that'll give you an idea of what this system's all about. But he talks about this system that he's developed for strolling and walk around magic called CUPS and how it can actually make this seem more impossible. And using this system, it feels like the uh, the audience have had a completely free trip. They're literally just thinking of a card and the card box changes. Um, and he doesn't even use the gaff deck to do that. And they just think of a card. And this whole cup system can be utilized in a lot of other close-up magic that's done in a strolling environment. And he says at the beginning, when he actually talks about cups, he says, if there's one thing you get from this project, it's this concept. I don't know why more people aren't doing it, but this is how it works and this is why it's so good. And I have to agree wholeheartedly with him. Even if I didn't like the trick, which I do, the talk about the cup system, I think is just absolutely genius. And if he bought that out as an ebook, I think people would be raving about it. And the fact is he's just put it in here as just a little bonus. Um, it's typical Vanishing Ink quality. The cards are really well made. The box is really well made. Everything is really good. Um, and you get, it's, it's worth noting, you get, a, or at least we got a red card box. But the gaffes that you get, you get, or at least we got four gaffed cards, which means that you could do this. Uh, it doesn't have to be an ace of spades. It can be a queen of hearts. And you've also got gaffes that you allow you to do this with a blue card box as well. So whether you use blue cards or you use red cards, you're going to be able to do this routine. Yeah. It just happens that the gaff deck is supplied with a red back uh, red back gaff deck. Um, yeah, I mean, I've kind of talked an awful lot. What do you think of this? I think it's very good. Yeah? I really like it. It's different. I know you don't like long, boring card tricks. Not only your long boring Oh, you don't like my long boring card tricks. Um, this is anything but long and boring. Yeah, it's short and interesting. It's short and interesting. And it's complete opposite. It's complete, what, to my magic? Yeah. Complete opposite to my magic. Um, it's, it's fun and it's impossible. Anytime a drawing or something that's printed actually changes, it becomes even more magical. And that's what you've got here. The drawing is actually changing. It's really cool. I'm going to give this 96%. This is absolutely 100% going into my act. I think it's great. I'm throwing this directly into my card case, my card case, my close-up case. And um, I, I, I plan on using this for a long time. 96% from me. What about you? Just, just to annoy you, I'm going to go 97%. 97%. Wow. Yeah, ben Seidman. There you go, 97% from the Kid Magician. Yeah, it's really good. It's very, very easy, but then there's more advanced handlings in the project as well, but it's accessible for pretty much anybody with any skill level. So Vanishing Inc. have once again knocked it out of the park. 97% yeah. from me, him, 96% from me.